I'm the uh, I'm the, f the fat uh, effeminate <laughs> Roman buggery. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good. The folds of my toga are perfect today. And I've kept Theophilus waiting just long enough to let him know who's the master of this house. How dare he barge in here and demand to search Byblos. In we go, Apollinus. Uh, perhaps the cameo is too audacious for a meeting with the Archbishop Master. Why don't you give it to me? This brooch. It's just the right accessory for the occasion. My favourite cameo, me as a young buck. <laughs> I'll not have him think those bigoted laws have riled me. The death sentence, indeed. The law condemning Canide has been echoing round and round in my poor head since this morning. Atone for a crime of this kind in avenging flames. Erase the thought, Rufius. He wouldn't dare. The brooch stays, Apollinus. I'll not have Theophilus thinking he's frightened Rufius Biblis Catamitus. But, Master, the Archbishop knows about your library. You need to tone down. That self-righteous Pratt doesn't know anything, Apollinus. <laughs> Why would he be here talking and not burning my books as we speak? He suspects, but suspicions have no weight in court, dear. <laughs> What in Bacchus's name is that squeak? The slaves who pulled open the tall doors to the ground floor parlour look mortified. How can I make a serious entrance accompanied by a squeaking doors, dear? <laughs> Apollinus is still fussing behind me. They will be oiled, master. Don't bother me with the method, Apollinus. <laughs> <laughs> How disappointing. No slave head bobbing between Theophilus's legs. <laughs> Byblos's hospitality not good enough for him. Where does he find his pleasure? In the darkness of the shame he preaches with church orphans. Or does he obey that pleasure-hating God of his and abstain? The dark cloaks of the archbishop and his inspector strike a harsh contrast to the sunlight streaming in from the terrace. Antinius's sweet face and the strum of the harp are at odds with Theophilus's sour face. Dark eyes framed by bushy black eyebrows. They've never seen a pair of tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach is a tight knot. This is the first time Byblos has failed to seduce her guests. The slaves look insulted. Cassius and Antoninus aren't used to being rejected. Even the senators and satyrs look like they want to leap from the frescoes and run out of the room. <laughs> Straight backed on the couch, Theophilus's dark eyes meet mine. Hmm. This will be an entertaining battle. Theophilus, what a pleasant surprise. Oh. Not bothering to rise to your host, to Hades with etiquette. Let's flash a plucked leg as I recline to irritate him. <laughs> Wine. Let's fiddle with my brooch as Cassius pours. Oh, the disgust on the Archbishop's face. Superb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cassius. My wine's well watered. The slaves want me to keep my wits. They're afraid of him. A beauty, isn't he, Bishop? I flick up Cassius, Cassius's tunic and the muscular buttocks tense. Oh, not rags you're wearing, are they, Theophilus? Now I'm closer to you, I can see the quality of the fine linen mix, possibly open to a little bribery then. I see your walls have been painted, Canidas. So he did order the graffiti. Pathetic. What an intellectual disappointment. Well, if it's cheap insults he wants, Apollonius will put you in better humour, Bishop. I keep him for guests with unusual tastes. <laughs> they both look at me like they want to kill me. 